We're going to do a video today showing how to do port forwarding inside your WZR D1800H wireless AC router. First thing you want to do is go to the IP address of your router. The default address for that is 192.168.11.1 with the default name admin, default password is password. Once you get in, you're going to be brought to an interface like this. Now, the first thing I recommend you do, of course, is a firmware update if you're not on the latest. Right now, the latest one we have is 1.91, and I recommend going to that one. Once you're updated, or if you're already updated, we're going to go to the Games and Apps section. So let me explain kind of what this is. Is You have a group. This is going to be a name that you give it. You can call it whatever you want, so that way maybe you have a particular game or application and you won't need to forward ports for that one. Sometimes instead of having it just all clustered and a bunch of different ones all around, you don't know, hey, why am I forwarding that port? We can name it and add all the different ports we need forwarded for that application in here. Then you're going to have the internet side IP address. You can almost always leave this to the air station internet IP address. The reason you're going to do that is it'll automatically update for you so that way if you're using maybe DSL or you don't have a static IP address, if you were to get a new one from your internet service provider, then it'll automatically update based on that. So that way you don't have to go in here each time it changes and update accordingly. Next is going to be the protocol. So here you can forward all. Uh, I, I don't really recommend that. You can forward just ICMP and you can forward manual. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to TCP UDP and you can specify, we already have some defaults in there, a TCP, a UDP, or one of our premates. And really you could go to TCP and put in 80 and it would know it would be the exact same as just clicking 80. It's just going to save you a keystroke. So let's name this. I pulled up a couple of blizzards. So the blizzard one here is going to be, we'll just do StarCraft. So I'm going to name this one StarCraft. We need to forward TCP port, as they say here, TCP and UDP 6112. This is going to be the computer that you need it forwarded to. So this is generally going to be uh, maybe your desktop, maybe the one you're using right now, um, wherever that's going to be. So you need to find that IP address if you don't already know it. And it's recommended that you either do a DHCP reservation in your router, which our router does support, so that way every time your computer turns on it always has the same IP address, otherwise this would not work if it changed, or set a static IP address in your computer. It's two easy ways to go about that. The static IP address side is going to be to right click, open your network and sharing center, change adapter settings, that's the same for Vista, Windows 7, and Windows 8. You're going to right click on your network adapter and go to properties. You scroll down to TCP IP version 4. Double click on that or click on it and select properties and you can do use the uh, use the following IP address. You might set this to something like 192.168.11. Maybe 250. Something that's way out of the range of an IP address that might get put on your network. Um, and you have you would be using whatever yours is. If you've changed your scheme from 11. Uh, 192.168.11. Something to maybe 192.168.5. Something. Then you'd just put that accordingly in here. And then the gateway, which is your router's IP address, the same one that we're doing this work on. So this is how you set it static. I'm actually going to show you a way to do it DHCP reservation. I want to go to our LAN and WAN. When we go to the DHCP section, what we're going to want to do here is find out what our MAC address is and set it to what IP address we want it to be. Now you're going to have to add this in your current DHCP range. It would have to be able to pull it from DHCP. So if I went to my LAN connection and I see I'm giving out 2.11.2 all the way up to 2.11.65 because 1 is going to be the gateway, 64 from 2 is 6 up to 65. So I can give it an IP address all the way from 2 to 65. So back at DHCP I'm going to give it 65. And the MAC address, easiest way to find that is go right back to where that network connections was. So you can right click, open network sharing center, click on your adapter settings, and then it'll open this up. Right click and go to status, details, and it's going to be the physical address. Windows calls it a physical address. And we also use colons 
after each of the sets of characters where you have two they have a dash we use colons so let's put that in now now that we have that in there we're going to click add you'll see it's going to add it down to our list now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to ask this router to get a new IP address easiest way to do that is to just disable this network card and then we'll just re-enable it because I used to be using 11.2 and now it should pull up 11.65 You'll see there so every time I pull up my computer now on this router it will always get 11.65 a lot of times nicer because if you're using a laptop and you set a static IP address in Windows and if you go to somebody else's house and they use a different IP address scheme they don't use 11.1 they might use like 2.1 then you would have to go in you're gonna have to make those adjustments each time when you go back home you're gonna have to make those adjustments to hey get an IP address so if we do a DHCP reservation then it's always gonna pull it up the exact same similar to a static IP address when I'm at home but when I go over to a friends or coffee shop or something it'll automatically I don't have to do anything and it'll figure out the DHCP stuff from where I am so now that we've got that set we're gonna log back into the router you might notice after you set DHCP reservation that way once you hit save your computer gets booted off the, that MAC address gets bound to an IP address gets bound into a router and it might get confused to where it doesn't let you log in to administer it. We have a, a policy where we only let one person log in to the router at a time to manage it. And so when you're setting the computer that you're currently using through DHCP reservation, then it's going to kick you off and we're going to have to wait for that to time out, which is about five minutes. So about five minutes from then, you'll be able to log back in. It might look something like this error. Other users are already logged in. Two or more users can't be on at the same time. Now that we're back up, let's go back to that games and apps area. So now we know our IP address is always going to be 11.65 inside this router. So I can always know that when I need to set something to that, it's always going to be the same. So let's go and add that StarCraft and it's 6112. I'm going to do P TCP there's also UDP so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do add the TCP it's going to be the same on both sides that's almost always the case unless something tells you otherwise so I'm going to go ahead you'll notice it's added it down here so I'm currently port forwarding TCP port 6112 to internal TCP port 6112 through my router it's going to go to this StarCraft gateway so now that's going to add. Now I need to go in and add the UDP to it. So instead of having to retype all that, I'm just going to go ahead and add that StarCraft group. And we'll do 6112. And I've got the UDP set. I'm going to add that down in. And there we go. It's got the StarCraft group. It's sectioning off each individual one. And that's all I have to do. So that's going to get you StarCraft. Um, let's show you some other ones. I'm just going to choose one that has a couple other ports. And I'm going to choose one that has a range. You'll see here, they're saying they want everything from 6881 to 6999, as well as 1119 and 80. I'm going to create a new group, Diablo 3. Generally, 80 is a web server. So it's interesting that they're hosting some sort of web server within the application. And what we're going to see here is notice now we've got a split and you have the Diablo 3 and the StarCraft separated so that way it's pretty easy to see maybe one of your friends is a big Diablo 3 player and somebody else a StarCraft player then you would form you would forward all the ports for one person to the StarCraft person to their computer and the other person can get it forwarded to theirs you cannot forward a port that comes in to two separate machines though let's go over that again you cannot forward this port 1119 I can't go in and also forward that to another computer. So I can't say, okay, let's make a group called Diablo 3 Friend. I'll show you what's going to happen. If I try to port forward this same port to a com another computer, maybe, maybe just two, it's not going to let me. I've already set it, port 1119 to this one here. So it will not work. And notice here, it's still editing because, hey, you're, you're broken. That's not going to work. You need to either delete it off of here or delete it off of here. I'm actually just going to turn this one off. I'm going to change this and we'll just redo this portion. We'll do that port range now 6881 and 6999. 
so there's no white space in there and we're going to do it to that 11.65 and save just put those ranges in with a hyphen just like it it's actually showing there so if you need something to something a full range just put a dash in between and you'll see here now I have different ports all forwarded I've got 80 and notice it's automatically figuring out it was at HTTP so because HTTP was already here I went and typed the 80 myself I could have just clicked the button 80 we just have a few of the popular ones defaulted and then right here I've got my range set maybe I want to edit that range oops I made a mistake I need to, to edit that I'm just going to click that edit button it's going to fill in those blanks back up here and I could just edit that maybe I want it all the way to 7000 they go ahead and update their uh, their services in, a, in another year and say hey for Diablo 3 you need to add it to 7000 there we go now I'm going to show you another popular one this is FTP a lot of people want an FTP server open so that way maybe they could hey send me his file real quick here's a real easy way just drop in this on my FTP server maybe you have NAS that runs an FTP server but you don't want it on all the time FTP is such a popular pro protocol that there are bots that will go out and look for FTP servers and then they'll try to hack them gain access to them and download their files see what they can do upload viruses so it's, it's generally good practice unless you have a lot of fire security going on you don't want to full-time run an FTP server most likely you'll notice here we're doing 20 and 21 FTP runs on port 21 for login process but a lot of the file transfer stuff also wants port 20 so generally we'll just open 20 and 21 and you'll notice down here we have SSH listed as port 22 SSH SFTP and SCP secure copy and secure file transfer protocol all run off port 22 so if you open that up you can use SSH SFTP and SCP if you have servers for those so if you want one of those port 22 is where it is then FTP now maybe I have a NAS I'm just going to title this one NAS FTP and I'm going to enable this for my imaginary NAS that I don't have plugged in as well. Now let's say you're done and you probably don't need it for another month or another couple days or something like that. You can go in here and you don't have to delete it. You can just turn it off. So that way the next time you want to turn it on you just have to click the on button. So that's a basic overview of how to do port forwarding, why you'd want it, and what it's doing. Thanks for watching.